Hey, listen, don't click away. I am not joking. Today, I'm going to show you how to add in an AI chat bot and give chat like features to your Mastastic channels. The idea here is, is you use certain tags like backslash AI. What that's going to do is then route a message from a Mastastic node over to a Mastastic node that lives in your local network. Now, this is going to be either connected to a computer that's hosting this software via your serial port and USB. Or if you have a Meshtastic node like this, this is one of the cheap ones, Helltech V3. It also has a Wi-Fi chip on here that I can use the Meshtastic app to then add this to my local network. What that's gonna allow me to do then is use this and the software that we're going to install and then ask questions against my local AI. Now, if you aren't hosting your own AI, that's fine. You can also use this piece of software and instead of routing it to your local AI, you can just route it to something like OpenAI's API. And then once it gets the answer, it's going to send it through the local network to this and then through Meshtastic, and Laura Radio, it's going to send it to all my nodes on that private channel. So this is a really cool thing because now I can ask it things, you know, backslash AI, uh, when did the dinosaurs roam the earth? And let's say I don't have a Wi-Fi connection, I don't have a cell connection or anything, I can still use the Meshtastic app if I'm connected back to this node. And this will then tunnel back to my local instance, get that answer, send it back to here, and then throw it back to the mesh network so we will have AI available to us. Now this is really exciting because it's AI and that's really cool, but it's also really a neat thing because now it's kind of a back door for your network. I don't have to open up or expose any ports. So if I give this to a friend down the street, they can still have access to my local AI, but simply by using a completely encrypted private channel over Meshtastic. So with that, let's get into this repository I found. It's by Mr. T-Bot. Mr. T-Bot, if you're watching this, thank you so much. He's open source this technology. I just got it up and running. It really wasn't a bad install. It's absolutely brilliant what it does. And I'm gonna walk you through how to set it up here. So with that, let's jump in. So this will be linked down below that this is his GitHub repository for Mesh AI. He points out a couple different features. It supports LM Studio or Llama if you're gonna do anything locally with your AI instance, and of course, OpenAI API. It also seamlessly integrates into Home Assistant, which means you can do things like send messages to then have it spawn off automations. Now, this is all done through backslash commands. This can be configured through commands-config.json, which means you can set up some custom commands as well. But there are a couple ones that I want to point out. We mentioned slash AI, and there's a couple other words that you can use that we'll talk about in a minute. But that basically is just going to elicit a response from your AI engine. Now, there's a couple other ones that revolve around your location. First and most importantly, we have a backslash emergency and a backslash 911. What this is going to do is send out a message to some people that are on an email list or on an SMS thread or on a Discord messenger, messenger, it's gonna send them not only a message that you're in trouble, but also your coordinates. Now, a little bit about that. Most of these devices, especially on the cheaper end, don't have an onboard GPS chip. You can buy some that do, but even if you buy those, you need to make sure you're going into the Meshtastic app and enabling location. That way it will be able to send that with the message to your people. But what if you don't have a GPS on board? Well, when you set up your Meshtastic device, go into the Meshtastic app. And when you click the device, there's actually a little till mark that you can click that says share phones location with the node. And that will give you the ability to send that coordinates in case you get into trouble. There's also a backslash where am I? Now this will just send back coordinates based on your GPS so that you know where you're at if you get lost or something. So this emergency alert, the triggers, you can set up Twilo, Twilo SMS, SMTP email like Gmail or something. And even Discord is going to send the GPS coordinates, the timestamp, and then the user message. Down below that, we're just gonna see a quite extensive change log, which I like to see. I also like to see that he is very active and diligent about um, documenting all of his changes. Now we have three different ways to install this. You can install this on a local Windows device on your local network, on a Linux device on your local network, or even inside of a Docker container. Now I'm going to focus on the Windows install today, and we're also not gonna go real deep into connecting it with Twilo or anything like that. We're just basically going to get it working. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna just make some changes and install some scripts. Now, in terms of how to use this, we already talked a little bit about that. 
Uh, but if you use backslash AI, backslash bot, query, or data, that's going to just elicit a response from your AI engine. Backslash where am I? That's going to send GPS coordinates if available back to you. And then backslash emergency or backslash 911. As we mentioned, it's going to send all that other data via uh, Twilio, um, Gmail, and Discord if you set it up that way. You can also send text messages, backslash SMS, and then whatever message you send. Remember, this node is back on your network. So it has full access to the internet. So if you can get messages back to that, it can use all these other services and you'll set all these other services up through this configuration as well as some other basic things. So first and foremost, you're going to want to turn, if you're going to use Wi-Fi, turn that to true. Then you'll put in your Meshtastic nodes IP address and the port. Now that's all listed when you connect to it over your network on the Meshtastic device. If you don't want to use that, change that to false, and then you can use your serial port if you're directly plugging it in. We're also going to change this. In my case, we're going to just bring this down to a llama because we're selecting which AI provider. And then we need to put in our different details. If you're using open API key, that goes here. If you're using uh, LM Studio, your URL goes here. I'm using a llama, so I'll be putting in my local URL here to my a llama instance. Then down below here, just like all of them, depending on which one you're using, you can define which local model you want to use. Just make sure you have this downloaded to your, um, in my case, Olama instance so that you can leverage that. Then down below here, you can name your channels. Now, this isn't pulling from Meshtastic, so this is very arbitrary. You can name it whatever, but I lined it up with how I have my Meshtastic channels. He did say at some point he's going to pull this information, but for right now, he just doesn't have time to address that. And it's easy enough just to come in here and manually do it. Now, down below, if you want to set up Twilio, which I'm not going to do, or email or Discord, all that information's down here. And you can refer back to this documentation. It'll walk you through Home Assistant and all that and setting it up. So what you need to do from here in the first step, now you understand all that stuff, you need to scroll to the top. When you scroll to the top, you're going to download this. So you're going to go ahead and hit this download zip. When you download the zip, it's going to download it and it's going to name it mesh-ai-main. So there'll be a file in there that says mesh-ai-main. You need to delete the dash main from that file once you extract it. Once you extract it and you have it, so just mesh-ai, you can put that folder wherever you want and that's where it will live. That's where the program will live. So just put that wherever you want. I happen to put it on my desktop and I also made a quick bash script as well. Um, to kind of automate all this stuff that we'll talk about at the end. But first and foremost, download this, extract it, rename it, and put it in a, a location that you want to keep it forever or for as long as you're going to use it. All right, now that you're back on your desktop, what we need to go here is type in CMD. We're going to right-click this, and we're going to run as administrator. So once we do that, let me drag this over to my other screen here. We will put this next to that. Now that we have this open, we're gonna do something really quickly just to make sure you have this installed. We need to make sure you have Python installed. So just type in Python, and if you do, it's gonna show you those details. If not, we'll try to bring up a Microsoft Store to have you install it. Don't do that, just close it. Go down to the links down below and install Python before you move forward. So we're gonna close that out. We're gonna redo that, run as administrator, hit yes. I'm gonna have to drag this over again. Now that we have that here, we're just going to follow right along. First thing we're going to do is we're going to change directories and we're going to get into the directory wherever we put that folder. So mine CD, let me grab this. I can't remember exactly where I put it. I put it on my desktop, dum dum. That should be easy enough. So right here, we're going to grab this and we're going to CD into that. So right now we'll hit that here and we should be in there once we're in there we're going to copy this which is this uh python vin vin and we're going to do that here hit enter once that's done we're going to go here we're going to do the scripts and this is going to activate that virtual environment you'll see it right here and then what you're going to do is you're going to do your pip install upgrade and your pip install all requirements this is where pip comes in so you're going to make sure that's installed i'm not going to do that because i already did this will take some time this last command it will go through some things once it's done we can shut down because now we're going to have to go in and edit our config.json file to make this all work so with that let's go ahead and jump into modifying that file all right now you just go into your meshy ai directory here you'll find this json config now, I've already made some changes, and I'm just going to walk you through what I did. If you're going to use Wi-Fi, this will say false. You just need to change it to true. 
Then you need to put in the IP address of your Meshtastic node that you have connected to your Wi-Fi. Typically, this is going to be 4403 port. You can also go on the Meshtastic app, connect to your network device. It'll give you this information. Here, we need to select our, our provider. I went ahead and just selected Olama because that's what I have. Now, if you're using LM Studio, of course, that would be here and you'd put all the information here. But if you're not, you can skip all this stuff. If you're using OpenAI Key, you'd put it here. Uh, but I'm using Olama, so I put the uh, address of my actual Olama install here. You can also define which model you want to use. Make sure you're downloading that model and you have it available or else it won't work. Now, if you were going to edit anything for Home Lab Assistant, you or for Home Assistant, sorry, Home Lab Assistant, Home Assistant, you would put it right here. This is where you're going to name your channels. Now, this isn't going to change it on Mestastic. Uh, these are just placeholders. You said one day he may have this polling. But for right now, you can just name it whatever you want. I recommend just lining this up with uh, the channels as you have them on your nodes. Now, if you scroll down here, um, you can also, you know, set up your Twilo, set up um, your SMTP for things like Gmail or whatever, if you wanted to email. Um, and then you can also set up your Discord. Again, you know, you can define where you're sending it and to what, what numbers you're sending it, things like that. I'm not going to do that right now. We're just going to get this thing working so that we can ask it some questions. So once you have all those things kind of filled out, make sure you consult the documentation. I know it went pretty fast here. Then what we can do is just do file and then do save as. So file save as, make sure it's config.json and hit save. We'll replace that. Then from here, what we can do is we can go back over here to our trusty command line and we can now finally issue python mesh.ai so right in here we're going to make sure we're in this, that same directory directory and we have the ven venue um, running so then we'll paste this in here let me grab it again copy paste and hit enter now what that's going to do is it's going to run through you're going to keep this open just in case we need to look at anything but right here it says it's connected to my device and it's also knowing that we want to use Olama. So that's all great. Now we need to go over here and just open this up in a browser. So if we open this up right here, we can now see we've got our channels there. So it's all connected. So let me go ahead and uh, mark all these as red. Uh, so that way it clears it out. Now I'm going to send a message on my phone right here. I'm going to do backslash AI on donkey chat. So if I do that, so I'm on donkey chat. Let's go ahead and do backslash AI is a dog, a wolf. Now, what we should see here is it's sending over Meshtastic. And you can see there that a little alert went off, but you can also see it here. It routed through Olama. It sent it through the channel. It's waiting for the response just to avoid collisions. Now, I'm also looking on my phone here and waiting for it. So now it says it's sending back the answer. It just came in. And now I can see, no, a dog is not a wolf. Dogs are domestic animals that have been bred for thousands of years while wolves are wild animals from the Canada family. So that is on here as well. So this absolutely works. I couldn't be more pleased with it. That was not a bad install at all. Now, one last thing, in order to shut this down, you would just simply close your command if it was running in there. And that's fine, but in order to run this again, you'd actually have to go through a couple different commands. So you'd have to open up your CMD and then you'd have to run on Windows. You'd have to run this right here, this Python command and then this uh, VenV script activate. And then you could run this again. So it's just a couple different steps. So what I did was I went ahead and created a bin file and this is going to sit as an icon on my desktop that I can click and it will just run through all that stuff for me. And then it will also open up a Chrome web browser with our management portal. So if I uh, do that and hit save, actually, let's go back here. If I do this and I'll have this in the description and I go file, save as you can save it, whatever. Just make sure it says dot bat. And then you want to go all files and then you want to hit save. Once you do that, it's going to give you an icon. It's going to look something like this. And this is the cool thing about it is I can double click this. It's going to pop this little icon up because I'm trying to run it as an administrator, which I want to do. I'm going to hit yes, and then it will pop into our CMD right here. And then lastly, as you just saw, this just populated and opened up my tab or even opened up the browser if it's not open 
to our management console here. So that is really cool. That way you can see your logs here and you can also manage it right here as well, all through this little um, bat script that I created. And again, that will be down in the description. Well, that's pretty impressive. Let's do a couple more chats while I have this up and running just to make sure it's working. I'm recording my phone, so here we go. Let's go ahead and say slash AI, say um, what country is Iowa, oh, Ohio in, sorry. So Ohio in. Let's go ahead and look at the logs. It sounds like it went through. And it definitely said, uh, okay, what country is Ohio in? Let's see if it gives us a response here. And it does come back with the United States. Pretty cool. Now let's try one of the geo locations. Nope. Psych. I'm not going to do that. I already know it works. You're going to have to take my word for it. I'm not giving away my location. So let's do one more AI. Let's go with AI and say, who is JFK? JFK. And hit enter that is going through on the logs it went through again this is all happening over laura and then this device right here connected to my network piping it into olama let's see if we get a response here looks like it did come back um interesting it says jfk does not appear to be a recognized name if you meant a person or organization please provide more context again this might just be the model i'm using one last one ai will say is a owl a uh, falcon see if we can trip it up a little bit all right it sent that out really quick makes sense we're very close to each other running on this mesh network so now we're waiting 10 seconds this whole thing's happening in the background using the software and let's see it definitely picked it up and it says yeah it gave us an answer here so on the phone um and it delivered but it's not showing on this phone for some reason but i heard it ping on the other one there it comes in so uh no an owl is not a falcon both are birds of prey but they belong to different families owls strigmaformas and falcons falcade canada so anyways probably mispronounced all that stuff but you can you can see it here it works just fine so the sky's the limit on this stuff i think it's a really cool application well, now you can combine everything and especially for us home labbers you know being able to access this local install via mesh network that's fully encrypted end to end oh my goodness now you're just you're talking our love language i think so uh, anyways if you're interested all the links will be down below i hope you found value in this if you did consider liking and subscribing as always my name's hill phantom and i will see you next time